Let's go over to the next page. As we're looking for a common denominator for three different fractions, or even for two fractions, or four or five, or however, we're looking for a common denominator, we're looking for a number that, uh, to use a, a widely used term, all of these guys go into, right? Okay, but then we, we talked about in class last time how we can find this common denominator, the lowest possible common denominator. Um, and if we do it this way, it'll be much faster than multiplying them all together and then trying to simplify the resulting fraction, or just trying to say multiply by, like, uh, find the, the, the multiples of 30, and let's see if 18 also has that as a multiple, and see if 4 also has that as a multiple, right? So, here's what we need. Uh, first, let's find the prime factors of each of these, and I'll explain why, if you're not remembering why. So 3 times 6, so 3 times uh, 2, and then 30, 3, 10, 3, 2, and 5. Okay. So in order for 4 to go into this common denominator, this common denominator, like if we were to factor it, this prime factorization, would need two factors of 2 in it. So they can multiply these two factors of two together and get four. Does that make sense? So then we'll have four times something is the common denominator. We have two times two. That's one part of it. That makes sure that four times whatever makes the common denominator. Right. Now let's look at 18. For 18 to be a factor of this common denominator, whatever it winds up being, we need a factor of three, a second factor of three, and also a factor of two. To make sure that happens in this number, I really only need to get these two factors of 3, and I can use this factor of 2 that I've already used because I need the 4, and that will make 18. Okay. So, so far we have a number, it's, it's not the common denominator, but we have a number that 4 is a factor of and 18 is a factor of. It's 4 times 9 and it's 18 times 2. Okay. Now we need this third number to be a factor as well. We need 30 to be a factor. For 30 to be a factor, we need a factor of 3, a factor of 2, and a factor of 5. We have a factor of 3, we have a factor of 2 already, so we just need another, well not another, but we need a factor of 5. We take this 2 from the 4, and we take this 3 that we brought in because of the 18, and this 5, and we get 38. Uh, so now we're sure that we have a number that 30 is a factor of, 4 is a factor of, and 18 is a factor of. It's just a matter of rearranging the factors, right? Uh, so this number is 4 times uh, 3 times 3 times 5, so that is 45. It also can be written as 18. 18 times 2 times 5, so 18 times 10. It can also be written as 30, which uses these three factors. So we need to multiply 2 times 3 times 5 to get 30 times 3 times 2, so 30 times 6. Or if you prefer, just multiply all those together, you get 180, and then you can you know, figure out 4 times what is 180, and then you know it's 45, however you want to figure it out. But we need to know these things. This is our common denominator. And so 4 times 45 Give us our common denominator, so we know what we need to multiply 3 by. Uh, 18 times 10, so we know that we need to multiply by 10. 30 times 6, so we know that we need to multiply by 6. That gives us 45 times 6, 135. 180 plus uh, 70. So 135 plus 70 plus 78, 
If you want to multiply all those denominators together and then simplify the result, you do it that way. But I really do challenge you to think of it this way because it, it takes a little bit of trust. But I know what's coming down the road. I know what's in store for you mathematically in algebra. And we're going to have to add together fractions that aren't just numbers. And multiplying the denominators when the denominators are these things called polynomials, you're going to have to trust me that you don't want to do that. It's not going to be very easy. It's not going to be as easy as this seems to just multiply the denominators together and simplify. When it comes to factoring polynomials, that's a different story. It's a different kind of things, and it's a lot trickier to factor them. So start now. Think about numbers as being products of prime factors. It's the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is that every number has its own unique prime factorization. It's an important thing to know. Other questions from the homework at all? Are we ready to just show off on the quiz? Ready? Got a question there? You do too. I can. This, uh, this one right here. No, the not that one. Well, I don't want this one. Yeah. Okay. Just before we do this, let's talk about what the order of operations. There. So this question is about the order of operations. So let's talk about the order of operations. Did we, did we get to watch this video? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, didn't we about that? Oh, yes. I was all that fractions and order of operations. Yeah. Just his hand is flying around the screen. Yeah. And things. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is just a screen grab from that video, and so we're going to use it to talk about what is the order of operations, why do we do the operations, do, do we get into that? Talk a little okay, bit. So, so we have this order of operations, if we say we didn't, let's say we didn't have this order of operations, which is uh, just an agreement among all people who do arithmetic as to the order that we would do these operations. Okay? Uh, if we didn't have that agreement. What would we have to do in order to say, I want you to do this first, and then this next, and then this next, and then this next? How would I communicate that to you? Yes? A ton of parentheses? A ton of parentheses, just like this thing has here, right? So let's examine the order of operations and just see, it's not that the order of operations is right and this other stuff is wrong, it's just that it is the agreement that we have. It is the standard. You will not see lots of parentheses directing you what to do first and what to do second and so on. So we do need to understand what the agreement is. All right. So all the order, order of operations does is allow us to get rid of parentheses. So let's examine that. Right. Let's go as far into the parentheses as we can. Here's a big set of parentheses here. Smaller still, smaller still. So we have you know, this, this group of parentheses right here. And within that, we're being told multiply 4 by 5 first. Uh, kind of at the same time, take 18 divided by 3, and then subtract this number from that number. Right. 
But the order of operations allows us to say, agree that in, before we do subtraction, we're going to do multiplication and division. Right? So the order of operations would tell us to multiply these together before we do anything else anyway. Right? Does that make sense? That's all it is. It's just, just the guidelines for what order to do the operations so that we can save our money and not you know, have to spend so much money on ink making all these parentheses. Just save some, some money and some time. Also, we would do this division before we would do subtraction, so we don't need parentheses to tell us and direct us toward what to do first, so we take this out. This is what we would have done anyway if we had the order of operations. We would multiply this first, we would divide this before we would subtract, so then we find this number, we find this number, and then we do the subtraction. And then we're done. It's just what we agree to do. Okay? Now let's continue to look. Uh, so this is a number we understand. We, we understand this is going to be a number, and then we're going to use those numbers in, in addition and subtraction. Uh, this is telling me take essentially 20 and subtract 6, right? Does it make a difference if I take 20 minus 6 and then add 3, or could I do 3 plus 20 and then subtract 6? Is that the same thing? No. That's the same thing? Yeah. No. Yeah. Let's find out. Let's write it down. Um, so if I take just kind of like this, 20 minus 6, we said parentheses, that's what we have there, and 3 plus that. If I do this first, I'll get 3 plus uh, 14. That equals 17. What if I just do 3 plus 20 first and subtract 6? What do I get? 23 minus 6, what's that? Oh, that's right. Same, Same thing. thing. <laughs> that's called the associative property of addition. Okay? Something that it's not so much a, a rule, but maybe like in, it's not an agreement, and that is just the truth. Whether I start at uh, 20, go, talking about the number line here, start at 20, go back six, and then go to the right three is the same as starting at three, going to the right 20, and coming back six. It will still get you to 17. Yeah. Well, if you're using the rule, why would you, why would it matter if you started with the parentheses then? In some cases, it doesn't matter. That's the answer. Okay. Okay. And in this case, what the, the, per, the point I'm making here is that we don't need those parentheses. Right? That's what we've been doing. We've been getting rid of parentheses. And so these parentheses are uh, well, emphasizing them now are unnecessary. Unnecessary. Okay. Three plus four point five, four point five, or not four point five, four times five minus eighteen divided by three. Like whatever order we do that addition and subtraction, knowing that we're gonna do the multiplication first. And uh, kind of at the same time, we'll do this division, and then we'll do the, the addition and subtraction. Uh, it doesn't matter what order we do it. If we do four, four times five minus 18 divided by three, and then add three, it'll be the same as doing these two first, and then doing that one. It's just the associated property of addition, as long as we understand that this is addition not being a negative number. Okay. okay, well, now I have some parentheses plus some other parentheses. Uh, whether I add 1 plus 2, and then add 3 and 20, and then subtract uh, 6, and then take the result and add those together, or if I just do start at 1, move to the right 2, move to the right 3, move to the right 20, move back 6, like it's going to be the same thing. It's just, again, the associative property of addition. So I don't really need to be told to do these first, and these first, and then combine them. I can just combine them like this. I could rearrange these numbers in any way I want and do them in any order I want because it's just addition across the board. No multiplication, no exponents. I could take this negative six, add it to the one, it wouldn't make any difference. I could just combine them in any order that I want because it's all addition. And of course you don't need parentheses around the entire thing. They're not gonna go anywhere. So the order of operations, all it does is allow us to not use so many parentheses. Some parentheses we need. We still need to sometimes say, I want these to be grouped together. Which really is just like, well, I kind of want to write something down, and I want something sort of to be done out of order. 
of the, the operation, the, the order of operations. So for parentheses at the very top, if I group things together, that trumps any other part of the order of operations. But otherwise, we'll make an agreement that exponents come first, then multiplication, division from left to right, addition, subtraction from left to right. And then we're done. That's all there is. So let's go forward, I guess. Follow the order of operations. So we've got some parentheses, so we should make sure that if there's those parentheses are there uh, with a purpose, we should do those things first. Uh, so here's the most inside parentheses, five minus two. So we should go ahead and do that. Three times five minus two. Should I, should I do this four times two? Mm. Why not? Because there is a part in the parentheses that you still have. Okay. Even more important than that, though, the reason I should do this four times two is, I mean, this this will just be some number, right? As long as I treat that as a number, and if I move stuff around, I move that as an entire unit. The thing that that tells me I shouldn't do this four times two yet is I haven't divided by four first. I need to figure out what's in the parentheses because what I need to do is divide that thing by four, whatever that thing is. So that's got to come first before multiplying by two. Left to right, division and multiplication left to right. Uh, can I multiply this seven times two? Even though the parentheses isn't done yet? Yeah, because if I multiply that seven times two, it is in its correct place in the order of operations in that I'm not trying to add two plus whatever this parentheses is. The two belongs with the seven, they belong to this multiplication. I could put parentheses around that, right? But because of the order of operations, those parentheses would be a little bit redundant because seven times two comes first. So there we have 14 plus, and then we got seven plus nine, right? The order of operations tells us not to add seven and three first because three is multiplied by three, so let's do multiplication first. Plus seven plus nine is sixteen. Same, same thing as I said up here. We don't multiply four times two because we do division and multiplication on the same order from left to right. Question. On your first step, why did you just like just leave the three right there? Which which seven plus three times three? Well yeah. times three. There's two threes. This three and this three. Yeah. Because five minus two is three. And that three is outside the parentheses. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's that first three there is that subtracting two from five. Uh, 14 plus first 16 divided by four. Now we take that four. That's 16 divided by four is four. We multiply it by the two. We don't do four, 14 plus four. If we didn't have an order of operations, there would be no reason why we shouldn't add 14 plus four. Right? Nobody's agreed to any order. So but if I were, I'm not going to, but if I were to put parentheses around that because I just want to force you to do that first, then you can't do that first. But we have four times two is eight, 22. Now if we go back to uh, this guy right here, this step, it seems like I haven't done like any really hard hitting research, but it seems like in Europe, it's more common to see people multiplying first uh, above everything else. Well, at least above division. Like they do all multiplication before division, like PEMDAS is the order in which you do things. So they do multiplication before division. We do multiplication and division on the same level of the order of operations, but from left to right. And it doesn't mean either one of us is right or wrong. We just agree to different things, right? Just like we drive on the right side of the road, we drive on the left side of the road. Neither one of us is wrong for doing either one of those. If you try to mix the two, now you, you get into trouble, right? If you drive on the right side of the road in Europe, you're gonna have trouble. Are you driving on the left side in Canada? Or no? No, they don't. I think in Canada, but I don't remember. You know what I wondered? Like, 
There's got to be some country that borders another country. One drives on the right, one drives on the left. Like when you cross the border, how did you take that? Mongolia. Two lights, and then it's like Mongolia and China. Is it? I don't know. I'm just guessing. That's a good idea. Seems like a lot of trouble. Or like a like a bridge across the other lane or something. How is that? Just got a ukulele. Oh, just kind of cool. <laughs> no, uh, any other questions? Are you ready tonight? From the homework? Oh, if you feel like you're ready to show off your skills, and pass in your homework. Or your homework. Alright, let's go. Let's I guess start with this one, number one, that would make sense. So we, we did one like this from the homework questions. So hopefully we felt well prepared for this one. All right, I got 28. Let's back to that guy. Let's see, uh, four, times seven, we got four, or sorry, two, times two. That looks good. <laughs> fix that. Two times two, times seven. All right, 20, that will break down. Two, that's four times five, and that's two times two. 30, 3 times 10, 3 times 2 times 1. So we just got to make sure that we have all of these combinations of factors so that 30, 20, and 28 can all be factors of this common value. So we can start with any of them. Like we can start with this one. 3, 2, 5. 3 times 2 times 5. Got to have all three of those or we can't make 30 and 30 wouldn't be a factor of this number. Okay, we also need a two, a second two, and a five. Like all those have to go together to make twenty. So let's see what we have. We got a two. Uh, we also have a five. What do we need? One more. Two. We need another two, so that the two times the two times five will make twenty, and twenty will be a factor of this common denominator. Here we go. Two times two times seven is what we need. We need a two. We got a second two. We just need a seven. Now, if we mistakenly put a two in there again, is that wrong? Yes, it depends on what the question is. The question is, what is a common denominator? Is it wrong? No, no it is something that all three of these would go into. It's just a little bigger than necessary. So I got confused, so we have to like, so we would only need two two, not like five. Right. Not that it doesn't work, it's just that we do it this way, and if, if any simplification is needed, it'll be much easier than if we include all of those. So we don't need that other two, we don't need five twos. The most twos that any of these need is just two of them, right? If one of these numbers had three factors of two, like eight was a factor of this number, then we'd need three twos. Maybe look at it this way. We need, let's back it up just to, to one factorization, one tier down. We need a four times a seven to make 28. Okay, so I need uh, this guy and this guy and this guy to make 28. Let's think about this guy. We need a four times a five to make 20. Here, let's, let's do like step by step. So the two times a two times a seven, that's 28. <laughs> 3 times 5 is 15, so 28 times 15 is the common denominator. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. 28 times 15. 20. What is it? 420. 420. Okay. So now let's. And now let's see and make sure that 20 is also a factor of this common denominator. Well, I can write it differently. I can write it as 2 times 2 times 5, or 4 times 5, right? 4 times 5, that makes 20. It's 20 times 3 times 7 is 21. So 20 times 21 makes also 420. Okay. 
And the last one I need to be able to make is 30. We can think about it this way. We can do three times 10, five or three times 10. Three times 10, that makes my 30. And so 30 times 14 makes 420. But I've picked all my factors in such a way that I don't have more of any factor than I need. The most twos I need at any time is two twos. I need two twos to make uh, 20, I mean, I need two twos to make 28. I only ever need one five, right? I only need one five and 30, I only need one five and 20. Is it starting to make more sense? Okay, and I know that there may be some, quote, easier way to do this, but thinking about numbers as, fa as being products of prime factors, let me say it this way, the fact that every number, every integer, is or has a unique prime factorization is called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Right? And the word fundamental means like really important. It is the basis of all arithmetic. Right? And the, the, uh, the fact that every polynomial, I don't know what that is yet, but every polynomial is the product of uh, prime polynomials of first degree, none of this makes any sense. That is the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay? So it's just the idea of factorization is fundamental, is very, very important. So if we can train our brains to think in terms of numbers and their prime factors, it'll set us up for just way down the road. I mean, here and here and here and here and just all the way down the road. Okay? Also there. Uh, okay, so any questions about that? We haven't added anything, but we did find the common denominator, 420. And we know what it takes. 28 times 15 makes 420, so 28 times 15 is what it takes to make the common denominator, so you can multiply this by 15. You need to multiply 7 by, well, 20 times 21, so 7 times 21. 30 times 14, so 11 times 14. So we have 15 times 5, 75, 3, 20, 21 times 7, 47, 144. Add 75, 147, 144. We get 76 or 420. And that's not even improper, so we can leave it like that. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we missed that. 376 over 420. Yeah. They both have what a two, two anything more? Three. Four. Three. Four. Three. Four. Three. Four. 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 Uh, yeah, four. Four. simplest form of the sum of those fractions. That's five times 21. Any questions? Yes? Okay, does it have to be a simple form? Oh, let's see. I didn't say that it had to be, so I guess. with exponents, let's just make sure we write it out the long way. This is evaluate, so I do actually want the result of this computation. This is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. It's not six to the third. Why don't we do two times three and raise that to the third? Because the power just 
just like above the blue not the blue. Yeah, like if I wanted that to happen, I would need to press. Now, mathematically, I, I think that just feels right. It just makes a little bit more sense. Though it doesn't mean that nobody ever makes a mistake of doing six to the third. It's the agreement that we've made. The order of operations guides us and says the exponent comes first. Then when that's done, we multiply by the two. Right? It's really an understood parentheses here saying take three to the third and then multiply by two. Anything else we want to have happen, we'd have to supersede with parentheses. Okay, that's very good. Here we have a fourth power, meaning we're going to multiply a number by itself four times. What is it that we're going to multiply by itself four times? Negative two. Two. Two fourth. Negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. Yes. Positive two. It is positive two. The fourth is applied to the two, the positive two, and then there's a negative. You can think of it this way. It's exactly like this problem, except for it's negative 1 times <coughs> 2 to the 4th. So it's negative 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is negative 16. Oh. Beautiful on that. A2. Okay, if we did negative 2 times itself, it could be 4 times. I would say that that's three and a four. Three and a four. Because you get the idea. It's not like you've just been sitting around and twiddling your thumbs. You understand what exponents mean. But you are making a conceptual mistake by including that negative with all of those twos. Right. Now, if you wrote this down, and it's clear that you understand what the exponent means, but you mistakenly wrote positive 16, by accident, that'd be a four. Okay. So one more of the story is the more work you show, the more likelihood you have to get more credit. Because I can tell more about what you understand when I can see more of your work. Okay. And that's why the wrong answer with no work does not give me any evidence about what you know. Which is why you do zero. Okay. If you feel really confident and you feel like you're using your calculator correctly and you got no problems, and you can just use your calculator and find the right answer. Okay, good. You get the right answer, you get the five, probably, unless I've asked for some work to be shown specifically. Um, but if you get the wrong answer and you've shown some work, you could, you could get four out of five. If you show no work, you get zero. All right? Yes. The wrong, okay, so wrong answer, no work equals zero. Yeah. Sorry, trying to get a zero then, buddy. It is so easy to do. <laughs> Gotta show your work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, next, we have this order of operations doozy. It took forever. So copy that over. Let's see how we go about it. But can I guess the answer? Just the final answer? Yeah. yeah. Guess it or tell me what you got. Hey, we're going to I don't even know what the answer is. 585. Okay, that sounds familiar. Oh, might be right. Yeah. Boom. Give it, give it all. Give it all. Negative eight. Twenty-five. What did I get? Negative eight. Twenty-five. Negative eight. Twenty-five. All right. Ready? I'm gonna stop all the step by step. So we're gonna go to the innermost parentheses. Start to see what there is to see there. I, so here's the inside parentheses. Should I do 4 plus 3? No. 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 And again, I just want to reiterate the why of this, the why we don't add 4 plus 3 first. It's not because it would be wrong. It's just because it would not be in accordance to the agreement that we made. The agreement called the order of operation. Right? The thing that helps us save on parentheses. All right. So multiplication first. That's the agreement we've made. 4 plus 6. One here, got a negative seven outside here. Okay. Yeah. Should I do uh, two minus six? No. Why? No. Because it's not in the order of operations. And 
what way is it not in the order of operations? Um, no, multiplication becomes before. Good. I wanted you to not answer this because there's parentheses. That doesn't really matter. The, the thing that really matters is that this negative 6 is being multiplied by 3. That comes first, okay. per our agreement. Okay. So I'm going to do negative 6 times 3? No. Why not? It's not yeah. parentheses. Are you saying I have to whittle down what's in the parentheses before I can multiply these together? Or in the yeah, time pass? No, you can do negative six. Oh, Isn't yeah. the time pass though? Parentheses that's go yeah. down. Let's think about this. What is? Oh, sorry, I blocked out something that's not quite right. What is this thing right here? Don't tell me the number. It's. I guess my point is. It's just a number. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's just a number. It's not an equation until there's an equal sign. It's just a number. At the end, there's going to be a number that results. Okay. Okay, so once I have that number, let's call it a thousand. Oh. It's not going to be a thousand. Let's say it was a thousand. What if we had negative six times three times a thousand? Would it matter if there was a thousand, or would we multiply negative six times three first? Right. So even though we don't, we're not, we haven't finished up parentheses yet, we can still follow the order of operations and multiply negative six times three. Yes. So how did I? How did I get it right? Or, or I think I got it right. I did the parentheses first. You can do the parentheses first, or you can multiply negative six times three. Neither one of those things violates the order okay. of operations. Okay. It's not that parentheses needs to be done before anything else can get done. That's, that's it right. needs to be done if the question is, should I, like, should I take negative seven, or should I take seven to the third? No, because the parentheses trumps that this three appears next to the seven. Parentheses is the thing that needs to happen first before exponents does. Okay. Now, all that's happening here is a negative six times three times some number. We just haven't figured out what that number is yet. But say we did. We had negative six times three times whatever that number is. We still do negative six times three first. Okay. So if you do that though, if you if you multiply the or do the parentheses all out first, you're not going to be wrong. It's just that you don't have to feel trap, you have to do the parentheses before you multiply this negative 6 times 3, because that's also following the order of operations. So how about 18 times, uh, I guess we'll add these together. Should I do 5 minus 7? Got seven times ten, right? Got multiplication first. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Uh, two, oh wait, can I do two minus eighteen? Give me negative sixteen. You have yeah, no yeah. Well, okay. No, because it's multiplied. Because negative eighteen is multiplied by parentheses. See that oh. negative eighteen needs to get multiplied by parentheses. I don't know what's in the parentheses yet, so I can't really take care of the eighteen. So we're just gonna have to write it again, and we'll do this. We'll do uh, seven times ten. I just put these guys together, right? So what I have essentially is like 6 minus 70. Put the 5 plus 1 is 6 minus 70. It's negative. So 3, 4. Divide by 8. 7. Now here we have 2. There. What do I have? I have a, a 2. I have an addition. I have a negative number. I have a bunch of multiplication and division. And I have a plus 7. So I'm going to have to. Focus on this multiplication and division, work from left to right. right? Mm -hmm. 2, negative 18 times negative 64, how much is that? Let's find out. Um, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That would be 6, that would be 82. 18 times 64? Oh, times. Times. Mm -hmm. 1,152. It's positive? 1152. Yeah, I'm not Good job, Jim. Yeah, my name is Daryl. Good job, Daryl. Thanks, right. I forgot, sorry. Good job, Jim. All right, we got still multiplication and division to do. Why are we, what, what's it with the turning around and the docking? Not necessary. Okay. Do the division before the multiplication because it's on the left. That's the agreement that we have. 
And what is 1,152 divided by 8? I got you. Oh, oh wait. Maybe you hidden. Mm -hmm. 144 times 4? 576. Plus 7 plus 4. 586. 585? I got 8. Good job. Ooh, I kept that in. I did the wrong problem and it came over that too. But I didn't copy it down because I wasn't smart enough at the time. <laughs> okay, so try and give each of these a uh, score of 5. Eight. 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 Score the whole thing out of how many points? in general, but when we get into algebra, we really start to get into the, the logic and the reason, and that's what I promised you was the benefit of learning algebra. It's not that you'll be able to solve a quadratic equation. Ask any adult you know, and the last time you solved a quadratic equation, especially yeah. using complete the square, and they'll tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Probably in high school they'll say, but they won't even remember if they did do it. All right? So, uh, that being the case, I'm going to try and sell you on, you're going to use this all the time, you're not, but you are going to use the logic of it, all right? Breaking things down and deciding what can be true, what has to be true, what can't be true, all right? So let me give you an example. We're going to use letters to represent numbers, okay? So let's say, uh, if A and B are real What things sound like in math, uh, pure math. What's a real number? Yes, one. Okay, that's an example of a real number. You think you've ever used a number that wasn't real? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you've, you've heard about imaginary numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these ones. This is so. Oh, this. About what? Imaginary numbers or this joke? Uh, the joke and imaginary. Oh, okay. So. Yes, there are imaginary numbers. Does anybody know? The basis of real numbers is the number one. That's the basis of imaginary numbers. Can you tell me an imaginary number? An imaginary number? Yeah, like what's an example of well, That's what I'm asking you. Do you know the basis of imaginary numbers? Yeah. No. One is the basis oh. of all real numbers. Would infinity oh. be one? I got one. No? Zero. No. That's real. No. I. I? Yeah. Okay, but it's a number. What number is it? It's not one. Is it? It it's, it's the number between 5 and 6. Nope. That's 0.5. <laughs> that's yes. Are they negative numbers? <sighs> there are negative numbers that are real numbers. That are, are not real well, numbers. I okay, you can negative 37 is a full number. Here's the imaginary number. You don't have to, we're not going to worry about it right now. But the imaginary number, i, <coughs> is the square root of negative 1. Oh, what's your 
That's what it is. That's the basis of all imaginary numbers. But we're going to forget about that for a second because it's really not relevant for a while. Okay, so a real number is anything that does not involve the square root of negative 1. That's a real number. Okay? If it's not real, it's imaginary. If it's imaginary, it involves the square root of negative 1. Okay, so A and B are real numbers. And A, B equal 0. Why does A times B equal 0? Because I said it does. Now here's the thing, here's the logic part of it. We can determine that some things would have to be true if these conditions were met. Can anybody make a guess or a confident statement? This is what has to be true. Yes? One of those letters has to be zero for there to be multiplication. Yes, and it, you know, and it is multiplication. This, this is the, the premise there. So A, so we have to say then A or B must, this is what I love about math, there's no arguing that one of these must be zero. There's no way for anything other than that would be true. A has to be zero, and if it isn't, then B has to be zero. And if it isn't, then something we set up here is not true. Right? If they're real numbers and you multiply them together, and you get zero, one of them has to be zero. We use this all the time in algebra. It's called the zero product property. Okay? So, but why is that? Why does A or B have to be zero? Why, why couldn't it be something else? Because A and B is an imaginary number. Oh, no. They're real. See, that's the thing about math. You're trying to make an argument, and I already said they're real. Oh, <laughs> It's not like in your face, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I've addressed that already. They're real, I already said that in the premise. So why is it why why does A have to be zero or if it isn't B has to be zero? You said huh? you said No. Um, As I said. The only things I said were A and B are real numbers and A times B is zero. Okay, anything times zero is zero. Alright. So if I, if A or B were zero, then I would get zero. But then why does A or B have to be like if A or B were zero, it would work. But why is it that A or B has to be zero? And there's no other way. You can't get zero by multiplying without the zero. Exactly. There you go. You cannot get zero by multiplication unless you multiply by zero. Right? We could say something like, well, anything times zero is zero. Well, is can I multiply by something else and get zero? No. There's only one way to multiply and get zero, and that is to multiply by zero. Which is really fantastic. Because let me show you. Uh, example of when this is useful. Times x plus 1 times x minus 2 equals 0. We will run into this uh, in a while, maybe in a few months. Well, I can make my guesses at what x is, or I could say, well since we have two numbers, this number and this number, and we're multiplying them together and we get 0, then we can think of this like a or b that x plus 1 has to be equal to 0. Or x minus 2 has to be equal to 0. So now we've taken something that is a fairly complicated equation and turned it into two really easy equations. Right. So in this case, what would, ha what would x have to be? Negative 1. Negative 1. And in this case, what would x have to be? 2. two. two. Positive 2. Okay. So we're not going to be there for while, but that very simple thing uh, has broad implications and uses throughout that. Just that one logical conclusion. That's the thing. That's one of the things that I love about that. So there's an example of us using numbers to or using letters to represent numbers, and then being able to draw conclusions about broader situations. Okay. Granted, they're mathematical situations. Um, let's see. So if algebra is using numbers, sorry, letters to represent numbers, then what would an algebraic expression imply? What would that be? What makes algebra algebra? Okay. What's an expression in math? X plus 2 equals 3. X plus 2 equals 
plus 2 equals 3. And even if we don't have an x, if we had 2 plus 3, that's an expression. 2 minus 7. That long operation, the order of operations thing on the quiz, that was an expression. Okay? I throw an equal sign in every different an equation. But until I have an equal sign, it's not an equation, it's just an expression. And an algebraic expression would be one that has a number in there representing a letter in there representing a number. Okay? So I want you to use algebra, use a letter to represent this English sentence. Five less than. So give me that. Give me five less than a number. Uh, I saw um, x, great. That is a number. We're being vague in an algebra. To be vague, we use x or a or b, or it doesn't matter what we use. But I saw a lot of this. Is this the same as that? No. no. Read the sentence, like read what this says in like this. Five. A number less than five. Yes, a number less than five. So less than, like what's five less than twenty? Fifteen. Five less than twenty is fifteen because it took five from twenty. I got fifteen. So I'm gonna find five less than a number. I need to have x minus five. give my classes little breaks. If you take breaks on your own, which is like talking after I come up here and I try to get things going again, then those are your breaks. Okay? I'd like to give you like several minutes in a row that you can just kind of stretch. But if I keep having to call you back, that's the time that we would have taken a break. So the faster we get back to what we're doing, the more breaks we can take. All right? Uh, seven times a number. The, the number can be represented by any letter. M. So M. Yeah, of course. All right. And I saw a lot of uh, like seven times this number, or seven times this number, or even this number times seven. All right. In algebra, we can communicate multiplication by just putting seven and then the letter right next to it. Right? Just like if you put seven next to parentheses, it means seven times what's in the parentheses, even though there's no uh, symbols to tell us to do. So there we have seven times a number. Um, yeah. We should be able to write this by words like from the real real world, such as uh, Daryl is fourteen times better. Now that's not according to that scale. Daryl's because that would be right. He's four thirds times as good. Yeah. He's four times, let's say four times as good. Okay. So how would I represent this? That I've used English words to write down. How would I represent it as an algebraic expression? Let's see how this work together on this one. 14 times R. 14 R. But that's 14 times R, right? I mean, I 100% agree with you. Uh, or capital R, or anything you want to use. Or Q, for no reason. All right. Well, what don't we know in this situation? How good is Rick? How good is Rick? Okay, now if I tell you Rick is three good, 
trade it. Okay. If Rick is three good, how good is Daryl? Fourteen good. Oh, eleven. Eleven, 11, 11 good. Eleven, 11 good. times that. Eleven better. Eleven. Eleven times better than that. Yeah. He's forty-two 11. good. Did you forty-two? Multiply <laughs> fourteen times three. Didn't we say fourteen times R? Yeah. yeah. Isn't Rick's goodness represented by R? So wouldn't we substitute three for R? Yeah. And so we're gonna multiply 14 times three. Yes. So if Rick is three good, then Daryl is 42 good. I can see. I think that's fair. Maybe I'm giving Rick on. He does bump a little bit. Well, he's the one that got Oh, never mind, you haven't seen that. I just gave something away for you. So the last thing that I want talk about is just what we've just done. That's what we call evaluating an algebraic expression. It's when I tell you what to plug in for the unknown value. We start off with an unknown value, then I tell you what it is. Okay? And that's all it is. It's as simple as that. Okay? So, right now, we know why we use PEMDAS. Why do we use PEMDAS? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I got a question though. Oh no. Somebody answer my question before this question. Yes? Okay. More efficient and saves ink and stuff. And saves money. ink in parentheses. Okay, question. Uh, is it pem das or pem dogs? I guess it depends on if you say ant or aunt. And I guess since add I call it or A stands for addition and das. I don't know. Uh <laughs> what makes algebra different from other math? We use these numbers. Letters, okay. Letters. Numbers. What is an algebraic expression? Or can you give me an example of one? Five times that. Great. What does it mean to evaluate an algebraic expression? Solve it. Solve it. Solve it. We'll talk about that later. To put something in and then do it. Yeah? Okay. And how to write it a simple algebraic expression? Well, we did that. Five less than a number. Right? Oh, Daryl is four <laughs> times as good as Rick. Yeah. Those are all the right expressions that you can write. In the graphs, we'll have to get to this. Oh, see, she's smarter than you, Tony. Oh. Anything. Can I see something? It's beginning to start.